Now, I have to tell you that people are excited and some very emotional to finally book an appointment and be that much closer to receiving the first dose of the vaccine. It is very busy out here outside Yankee Stadium. Just take a look at this line of people. Everyone you see here are residents of the Bronx. Smoke has been so heavy that we had to keep moving back because it was so hard to breathe. Just take a look at the large amount of smoke coming out of this building here. You see firefighters on ladders. You see them on the floor deploying their streams, trying to get this fire under control, but it just continues to spread through several businesses here on Westchester and St. Lawrence Avenues. I gotta tell you, I even had to buy myself a Yankees hat to just get into this feel good day. As you can hear the music in the background, people just really excited. Honestly, I haven't seen this area like this. Just take a look one more time. Just crowds of people just walking around, of course, with their masks. The solution? Advocates want the governor to cancel rent now and not force them to pay what they already owe and give them time to get back on their feet, starting with keeping housing courts closed. Jonah Hernandez, News 12. Eric, imagine heading out the door and you see your vehicle like this. Well, this is what multiple residents woke up to. Their cars completely torched. Asia Anthony, I've said this multiple times this week. People are passionate, driven, motivated, and really care about this election. We're inside PS33 along Jerome Avenue. Bronx signs have already started to come in to vote. This is what it looks like. Very busy here. Asia Anthony, the injured officer, is part of the gun violence suppression unit, and he is trained to take guns off the street. And we're told last night that is exactly what he was trying to do when he was shot. Now, at this hour, the scene remains here pretty active, as you can see. We've seen investigators collecting evidence as that officer recovers at the In Spanish, we call them hechos agradables. Maybe you know the big names in law today, like Sonia Sotomayor, the first Latina Supreme Court justice who, as the story goes, saved Major League Baseball in the 90s. Or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the firecracker lighting up Congress with her progressive ideas. By the way, both are Puerto Ricanas from the Bronx. Some of these businesses are going to need some serious repairs before they can reopen. We're seeing one, two, three buildings that are completely burned down here on DeKalb Avenue and East Gun Hill Road. Now more than ever, people aren't sure when their next meal will be. Well, today a team of NYPD officers and volunteers are packing up these vans and delivering these boxes of food. Kurt, this is a very small private funeral. We watch Brandon Hendricks' mother walk inside their church and you can just see the pain in her eyes, a pain that's indescribable. Now, what you're watching here is Hendricks' casket being brought inside earlier. His mother is being joined by close family members, including Hendricks' basketball coach and several of his teammates at James Monroe High School, rocking the number five on their jerseys that say, live like five. We know Reverend L. Sharpton is delivering the eulogy here at the First Baptist Church in Bronxville. Their service is being streamed live on multiple platforms for his friends and community to watch. Hendricks had just graduated from James Monroe High School when police say gunfire broke out at a friend's cookout on June 29th and he was shot in the neck. Hendricks never got the chance to celebrate his 18th birthday. His family and friends remembering him as an outstanding basketball player who was getting ready to head off to college. In fact, his family says he had options and was deciding where he wanted to attend. It's a very emotional time here. Since his passing, there has been a tremendous amount of support for the family calling out for an end to gun violence. His loved ones want people to remember Hendricks as a positive person who just wanted to experience life like the rest of us. In Bronxville, John Hernandez, News 12. It's a busy day at this warehouse. From unloading boxes to packaging cases full of groceries, James Patterson has partnered with the city to give back to his community. We got a warehouse. It was last minute, but we had to ramp up very quickly just so that we could supply the need. In the last two weeks, Patterson switched gears, transforming his catering business, Eat, into a packaging hub. What we do is we supply those distribution sites. The goal is to package 10,000 boxes like this a day, and then these boxes will be handed out throughout New York City. Inside of a pantry box, so we have uh, fruits, grain, like uh, spaghetti, oatmeal, things that have uh, uh, a longer shelf life. Hiring people from across the city who've lost their jobs. It's heartening to basically see that something like this uh, is devastating so many people. A mission he says his wife, who lost her battle to cancer two weeks ago, would be proud of. Told me, she says, listen, you go ahead on 
continue what they've asked you to do. I'm going to go home. I will see you when you get there. Patterson saying there's no place he'll rather be than serving his community. That's what Candy, his wife, would want him to do. I believe she walks with me every day. You know, uh, I'm just happy that she's been able to basically uh, give me her energy to basically move forward because she was the type of person that would give you anything that she had just because you were in need. In Hunts Point, Joanna Hernandez, News 12. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's an all-female skydiving team soaring through the sky. 4,500 feet to be exact. One by one, jumping off a helicopter. Gliding through the beautiful bright sky, showcasing banners saying equality can't wait and shall not be denied. Flying down the Hudson River, right next to Manhattan <laughs> with my homies over a super dense area with this tiny little spot to land in and celebrating women's suffrage in the 100th anniversary. All that combined made it so special. Proudly representing the suffrage colors for loyalty, purity and hope. 19th Amendment in language really only secured the right to vote for white women. And so as it relates to racial equity and, and equality at large, we want to make sure we're learning from history and really standing up for all of that. It's not a coincidence they landed at the Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx. This cemetery is so special because um, many of the original suffragists are buried here. What makes this day even more special in Central Park, the first statue honoring women pioneers like Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Sojourner Truth was unveiled. We went through incredible hardships so that we could get out to the polls. So what it means to me is like I hope it's a message to everyone to really respect them and honor them and get out to the polls this November. These world champion skydivers hoping to inspire women all around the world, reminding us that the sky is the limit. In Woodlawn, Joanna Hernandez, News 12. Forget it. I'm gone. I, I didn't cry yet, but I'm, I'm bound to cry, but not yet. Aerocycle bike shop on White Plains Road was John Ventrola's life. It's my place and I, I enjoy being here. Unfortunately, it might be over. For as long as he and his family can remember, he's been working seven days a week without missing a day. He was going to be 84 next week. Yeah. And a few years ago, I said, Dad, why don't you retire? You know, go away with Mom. He goes, if I retire, that would kill me. After nearly 68 years, John can't walk into his shop this morning after a fire ripped through his bike shop for hours last night, turning his once thriving business into ash. If you possibly put a new building here, I'm going to do it, but I don't know if I have the money to do it, but I'm going to try. As for what caused this fire, that's still under investigation. Firefighters are investigating if it happened at this electrical shop or the bike shop right next to it. It's nerve-wracking. It's still shock. I'm very emotional. Yeah, to see this. Juliette Salmon lives right next door and had just bought a bike for her granddaughter a couple days ago. I'm very hurt. I'm feeling your hurt too. I'm very sorry for you. She isn't the only one. Dozens of people who know him stopping by and sharing their memories. Very nice guy, you know, very humble, always helpful, and, and really knew how to work on bikes. For John, it's not over. What can I do? I'll, I'll continue what I'm doing. I'll continue what I'm doing. If I can possibly rebuild it, I will, but I know they're going to knock the whole thing down. In Williamsbridge, Joanna Hernandez, 